So just like many of you, I don't come from a rich family. I didn't go to college. I didn't go to Harvard, Yale. I didn't have, a, I didn't have anybody kick open the door for me and introduce me to a CEO or a politician that could financially set me up or create opportunities for me that would sustain me for the rest of my life. But I want to unpack for you in this episode, this video of the Seven Figure Squad, the 10 building blocks to not only get you $100,000 your income, but to get you to seven figures. What is the difference between making six figures and seven figures? I'll give you 10 building blocks in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? My name is smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas. And if you see this mess around me, this makeshift, office we literally just moved into an 8900 square feet office when a lot of people are coming out of the office and moving into the house and working from home we are actually leasing office space we're putting landlords to business we're putting contractors to business we're putting it specialists to, to business we want to fund and finance other businesses because that's what entrepreneurs do so pardon the dust here before we get our episode started please hit that like button and hit subscribe to make sure that uh, we get to our goal of 150,000 subs on YouTube because we want to award a church charity or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of you, the squad. And to make sure that happens, we need you to help us help other people. All right, so let's jump into it. I'm gonna give you 10 building blocks to get you to start thinking bigger, to start acting bigger, and help you see this financial light at the end of the tunnel. So there's two major things for you to consider when going on this journey to making six figures and seven figures. There's your tangible skills, and then below the line is your intangible skills. And guess why it's below the line? Because that's the foundation. You build this financial foundation, making six figures and seven figures on intangible skills, not necessarily tangible skills. And by the way, which, which do you think is easier to acquire? It's the tangible skills. Tangible skills are so easy to acquire. It's the intangible skills that what champions are built upon it's the intangible skills that people start making a 50,000, 100,000 a month type incomes. So the first building block to get into your first six figures and then seven figures, tangible is sales. Intangible is work ethic. Let me discuss sales right quick. If there's a skill that you're going to pick up that for the rest of your life will make sure that you stay gainfully employed for the rest of your life, it's your ability to sell. So if you learn how to sell, if you learn how to understand scripts, if you learn how to get things done, because you saw it get done, in other words, on-the-job training, well, that's a tangible skill that you can take for the rest of your life and start making six figures, two fifty, five hundred dollars $500,000 a year. If you know how to sell, you have better and greater relationships in your life. If you learn how to sell, you're a better communicator in your life. You learn how to persuade people into helping them understand your way of thinking. You'll win more debates. You will win more arguments because you learn how to sell. Now, oftentimes people think that selling is somebody's winning and somebody's losing. No, the right type of sales is when there's a win-win situation. And the ultimate winner is the customer in that transaction, not the manufacturer, not the vendor, it's the end person, it's the customer. So the, the, the challenge with this is that people, okay, I got it, Matt. I got the sales skills, I got the sales script. I know I've, I've, I've seen it done. I've seen it done hundreds of times. I've seen it done plenty of times. I've got tapes and CDs and videos to watch how sales is done. Then the intangible is then work ethic. Now you gotta get it done. Now you gotta take action. All the things that you learned, all the knowledge you just gained, now you got to take action and start creating your own experiences. Here's a challenge with that. Oftentimes people don't want to put in the time necessary to learn how to master this skill. They don't want to take time to learn how to understand the ins and outs of the particular sales skill set, no matter what product or service that is that you are selling. So consider this. If you have a work ethic, some people say, well, I just want to work 40 hours a week or 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week. If you want to get to six figures and seven figures, guess what? You're going to work 60, 80 hours a week. You got to learn how to do certain things that's not normal to a lot of people because you want to make abnormal type of income. You want to make some sick income. Well, guess what? You got to work some sick hours. People will say, I, I just want to make six figures and just call it a day by Thursday. Do you realize that people that put in this type of work that make six figures and 250, 500,000, seven figures a year, they work six days a week. And oftentimes they've said, you know what? This is my lifestyle because this is the life I signed up for. But bottom line, if you want to make six figures and then not to seven figures, you have to put in the work. And so if you want to make six figures and seven figures, consider learning sales and improving your skill set in sales 
and double down on your work ethic. So after watching this, if you're firm with me that you need to improve your work ethic, please put it in the comment section below. I am building a millionaire work ethic. I am building a millionaire work ethic. Second building block is product and identity. Product and identity. So are you selling a product that everybody wants? Is it solving a major product? Is the service that you're selling, is it, so, is it solving a major problem that everybody has? Is it making people's life easier? So when you do sell it, what's your margins on that product? How many, is it, how many of that do you have to sell to start making your six figures? I did a video here you should check out. It's called Doing the Millionaire Math, okay? If you want to make six figures and seven figures, do the millionaire math. In other words, you get into six figures and seven figures, understanding you know sales, you put in the work ethic, which is building block number one, then your product should be flying off the shelf. Last year, throughout this pandemic, because of our understanding of our product and the importance of insurance in the midst of the pandemic, we helped 25,000 customers last year because we had a product and service. We communicated that we had this product and service. We had weekly meetings and workshops, either on Zoom or in person, and 25,000 customers came to our way last year because we had a product. And at the top of that product, it also has a high margin. So is the product that you're selling low margin or high margin? When you are selling that product, how much money do you have to put into marketing and advertising? See, these are some of the things that you have to consider when selling that particular product of how many products or services you have to sell in a given week, in a given month, in a given year. The second part about this, the intangible portion of this is on the foundation of identity. Do you identify with the product or is it just something that you to sell? Do you really believe in it? Do you wear it? Do you have a personal story that allows you to sell that product or service naturally? And can somebody relate with you on their product or service that if you knew something about this product or service before you made a bad decision, your life would be much easier? Because when you are going from six figures to seven figures, if you can naturally sell that disposition, people will naturally buy and people will naturally be attracted to that and therefore you'll create more transactions because you're helping somebody have a better life or help them avoid a problem. Third building block is industry and mindset. Your industry. Is the industry that you're working in a wealthy industry? So if you wanna make six figures, go on to seven figures, the building block is I hope that you're working in a very wealthy industry. We did a video here you should check out. Five industries most likely to make you a millionaire. But if you pick an industry that's been around for a very long time and it's wealthy, that people in that industry make a lot of money and there's not a lot of government regulation or scrutiny within it. These are some things you need to consider on your journey to making six and seven figures from a tangible standpoint. Now the intangible portion of this is your mindset, your, your disposition. Because how you see things is how you do things. If you don't really believe in this industry or you don't believe that you have lasting power, or you're not really believing in the people that you're recruiting to the industry and really develop them, you're not really believing in the product and the innovation and technology that's involved in this industry, well, guess what? It's only a short matter of time before you quit and do something else. And by the way, you wanna make sure that you process that quickly because you don't wanna make a habit of quitting. Like, I've never met winning quitters. I've never heard somebody say, I'm gonna quit this and do this because I'm gonna do better over here. Oh, I'm gonna quit this, I'm gonna do better over here. Oh, I'm gonna quit this and do something better over here. The most successful people I've seen make six, seven, and then eight figures are people that stuck to doing one thing for an extended period of time. And I'm talking about 10, 15, 20 years in one thing. Oftentimes overnight millionaires, people think overnight millionaires it was six months or one year or two years. No, I've seen overnight millionaires take 10, 15, 20, even 30 years to get their business started. Because again, how you see things is how you do things. And how you do things is the results that you're going to achieve. So if you're firm with me that in your life, you're going to adopt a millionaire mindset, put it in the comment section below. I am building a millionaire mindset. I am building a millionaire mindset. Building block number four, it's scale and associations. Scale and associations. Can I go from a one-man operation to a five-man operation? Can I go from a five-man operation to a 10-man operation? Can I recruit and train 25 people, 50 people? Can I deposit into other people what I know? And here's a challenge that I have with many salespeople, with many people in many industries. They don't wanna share their secrets with somebody else because they feel that they're gonna give their proprietary secrets to somebody else and they've just trained up their best competitors. They just trained up their best competitors on their dime. And so that's the challenge. So it's not only being smart with it too as well, can I teach somebody what I know is to start making 50,000, 100,000, 250, 500,000, seven figures a year, but also retain them. So when you're building your business, 
I understand scale. How, how can I grow from a one-man operation to a hundred-man operation? How many departments do I need to set up as I start scaling my business? How many full-time employees do I need to start having? And those full-time employees, can I get them promoted to becoming mid-level managers, to become VPs, maybe C-suite operators uh, of my business? That's all about scale. What keeps people at 100,000 income, 200,000 income is this right thing very here because scale requires systems and processes. And oftentimes people want to take a step back. They don't want to document the systems and process. They don't coach and teach other people what they know because of fear of them leaving and taking their intellectual property and doing it somewhere else. So you have to create a method and a process. So therefore you can teach people, you can invest in people, you build a relationship with people. So they have a vested interest to want to stick together with you. Whether it's a compensation package, whether you give them stock equity ownership, one of the things that Sam Walton did when he was building Walmart is he gave every store manager an opportunity to own that Walmart in that particular area. It was a way for retention, for way for that local person to build a Walmart in a remote area to get them to want to stick with Sam Walton to get them to want to grow that operation, to get them to want to grow the local Walmarts. That's how Sam Walton, if you read the book, Made in America, he talks about how he recruited and retained his best employees. The intangible portion of this building block is your associations. Now, the hard part about this is your friends and family, the people you grew up with, they're gonna give you a hard time because they see you rising up. They're gonna start saying things to you like, don't forget where you come from. Oh, you can't return our calls anymore without giving respect to the fact that you're growing in business. And so these are the associations that you're going to change and to improve and to, and to acquire new associations as you get more mature in your business endeavors. The, these are the things that you gotta think about when, when developing your intangible in this category, in this building block, because the association will either build you up or sadly, it's so, these associations will bring you down. And if you're not careful with it, and if you got people loathing on you, hating on you, and uh, they're saying, you know, I don't like uh, what you're doing because you're spending a lot of time away from us, and they don't understand the price you got to pay to get to your six figures and seven figure type of income, but yet, yet they want to be there to receive the benefits of it. These are the associations you have to be careful about. So if you affirm with me that you <laughs> need to change your friends, you need to change your people, put it in the comment section below. I am building millionaire associations. I am building millionaire associations. Building block number five, the last one I'll cover, is business model and leadership development. Let me, go, let me cover business model right quick. What type of business model are you creating? Are you creating one-man operation? Are you a solopreneur? Are you creating a retail operation? Are you creating a franchise operation? Are you creating an e-commerce online operation? Are you creating a network marketing style distribution? What type of model are you creating for the expansion and growth to go from six figures to seven figures? And so now that you are growing your business, what model are you growing? Which portion of this is high overhead? Which portion of this has high cost? For example, a lot of guys in my, in my industry, for example, the insurance industry, a lot of them grow with a one-man operation or a 10-man operation or a 20-man operation, very small operations because they, they, they are spending money on buying leads. They spend money on direct mail. They spend money on cold calling. Sadly, the insurance industry hasn't changed much after that over the last you know, 30, 40, 50 years. It's been pretty much the same. That's why our industry has not grown. And so when I decided to scale in my industry, I chose a different model. Now, some of you guys have different models in terms of e-commerce. Some of you guys have different models in terms of franchises. Pick the model that you think is gonna help you scale with the least amount of cost with the highest amount of revenue. Because oftentimes people that get stuck in this area are people that stuck because they can't translate their business model for it to be teachable. We have a blueprint here. We have a, we have a manual here how to sell life insurance. We have a blueprint here how can people incorporate this, this enterprise in their city and state wherever you are in the United States of America. Why? Because we create a duplicatable blueprint and it's not based, check this out, it's not based on personality. It's not based on personality. Lots of people, for example, actors and actresses, they can't duplicate their skill to somebody else. So therefore they gotta be the ones that do the movies. Uh, uh, musicians, they can't delegate their, you know, have somebody else perform for them. They gotta be the ones on the road. They gotta be the ones on stage. So they're stuck. That's the business model they chose though. Okay, because based on talent and personality, the best businesses to scale from six figures to seven figures to eight figures are ones that are not based on personality. But in terms of business model, you gotta choose which business model is gonna take you to the next level in your endeavors to go from six figures to seven figures. And how you go about doing that, which is the intangible, is now leadership development. Are you growing as a leader? Are you the same person this year? Are you expecting to be the same person this year in 2022? as you were in 21, 20, 20, 2019, 2020, 
When people come around you, your friends and family, do they come around you and say, hey, you're just like, I've never left you before. Like you're, like you're the same person from 10 years ago. If people are saying that around you, that's a problem. If people come around you and they start talking differently, start walking differently, start obviously making money differently, we walk into a room differently, and people start saying, dude, you're much different than when I remember you. That's a very good sign. That is something you need to develop. And that doesn't, it's not an overnight thing. That's something you need to develop as a leader. And the, the bottom line to leadership development, the bottom line to leadership is this. Can I, as a person, get other people to do things that they normally would not have done themselves? When people come into your fold, can you get them to make six figures, 50,000 a year, 250,000 a year, whatever the case may be, can you help guide them and lead them to do something they probably would not have done by themselves? This is my definition of leadership. And can I develop people to also invoke that skill set, that intangible area, to other people too as well? That it doesn't just stop with them. That they're able to take what you've taught them and teach other people. Is that a skill set? And oftentimes, leadership development is based on one's values, their principles, their morals. That's based on leadership development. Is it sustainable now in bad times? Is it sustainable in good times? Is it sustainable in all times? What leadership values and development are you building today for next year, five years, 10 years? And I hope that's improving. If you're, otherwise, you're gonna find yourself stuck at 50,000 a year. You're gonna find yourself stuck at 100,000 a year. Many people that quit on me, many people that resign on me are people that, are, that can't stand the pressure because a guy like me, our staff, our core leadership around the country, we are adding pressure each and every quarter, each and every year because we don't want to be the same people we were a year ago, a quarter ago. We expect to grow. For example, our business plan this year is expecting to grow by 100, 125%. And we have a cash bonus to all of our guys that hit this goal in 2022. And it's gonna be fat bonuses. It's gonna be sick bonuses. The board approved fit over $15 million. Our company approved over $15 million in bonuses to be paid out to our top performers this year that grow their business by 75, 100, and 125%. So we have a way to compensate our guys. We have a, a tangible way for our guys and gals to grow as a leader, to grow in their division, to grow in their sales skills, to grow in the tangible skills, to grow in the intangible skills. So to get from six figures to seven figures and then get to eight figures and get to nine figures, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, I don't expect to stop individually for me. And some of that, my competitors are looking at this right now. I was, like, I was, I was hoping this guy was going to stop. I'm not stopping. I don't expect to stop. I don't want to stop because either you're growing or you're dying. Well, man, I'm just going to stay the same. Well, you're dying too as well because the only thing that's constant is change. In my book, the only thing constant that doesn't change is God. But again, that's for another video. But for you, you've got to grow as an individual. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. And some of you guys are thinking, well, I'm just going to hang out here and hang out here and just, you know, just kind of play loose. Listen, what did we learn the last quarter of 2021? This thing called inflation started kicking in. So you may not want to work and just call it a day, but guess what's going to happen? The economics around you, the political environment around you that you don't control, you might have a say-so in it because of your vote, but you ultimately don't control the policies that may be. That's why it's so important for you to understand what's going on in our country today, politics, economics, and help you understand the decisions you make today will make major ramifications down the road. These are just build, basic building blocks, things that we think about and talk about in our company all the time. And... Uh, it's something that's helped us generate over $7.3 million in cash flow over the last six, six and a half years, which for some of you guys watching this video is probably small money to you. But for a kid like myself with no college degree and, and uh, served eight years in the Marine Corps, it's a whole heck of a lot of money to me. But at the same time, too, as well, I'm humble because I know it doesn't come from me. It comes from the man upstairs. And all I'm doing right now is doing my very best to magnify that and, and manifest the skills and abilities and the talents and the opportunities that God has sent my way. And that's my prayer and hope for you too as well as you're watching this. You're watching this at 22 right now. These are the building blocks to get you past a lot of barriers to get you to start building a business that's sustainable not only for this year, next year, five years from now, and 10 years from now. So with that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your comments, your questions. Before I let you go, please check out these two videos. Here, number one, check out the millionaire math. Once you get these building blocks down, now do the math. Cool thing about making six figures or seven figures after, after a minute, the coolest thing about making six and seven figures, it becomes a formula. And that's all. Check out this video with my coach, my mentor, 
Patrick Ben David, host of Value Tainment, over 3.2 million subs on YouTube. So that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. If you agree with me, you don't agree with me, you'd like to add something, please put it in the comment section below. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.